Hi guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the second trimester recap. Somehow we have already made it through the entire second trimester. As I am filming this video, I am in my third trimester. I am currently, I have taken notes on paper and I also have notes on my phone, but I am currently 28 weeks, three days. I have 12 weeks to go until he is here. And that just blows my mind. I don't know how it has gone so fast. So I asked you guys over on Instagram and on my last YouTube video to send in any questions that you've had about the second trimester or pregnancy related questions that I'm gonna answer in this video. And we're gonna talk about basically everything that I experienced in the second trimester. So your second trimester starts around week 14 and goes through the end of week 27. And what's really mind blowing is I have been pregnant the entire of 2022 so far. So my second trimester started February 18th and went all the way through May 26th. So I went back and looked on the app that I follow, which a lot of you guys ask me which app I use, and I use the What to Expect app to follow along with pregnancy, baby's growth, and the size of him. And at week 14, which was February 18th, he was the size of an orange, and he was three and a half to four inches long, and now he is the size of a head of lettuce. And no, that's a lie. He's the size of a cabbage and he is 14 and a half inches long. So he has grown from the size of an orange to the size of a cabbage throughout the entire second trimester. So let's go through the questions. I have them on my phone. I also have nice list of paper and I have all of my pregnancy related symptoms written down. I highly recommend if you guys are pregnant and you wanna keep track because you will forget. I look back at this and I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. And this is kind of how I do it. I just do notes and then I specifically write, you know, at 15 weeks pregnant and then I mark down like what happened at that week. And the first question is, what were your most common symptoms in the second trimester? And they varied and some of them are actually starting now or towards the very end of the second trimester but I'm gonna rummage through what I wrote down. Um, and I wrote feeling overly full, difficult to eat normal portions and pain under my ribs. And that was definitely a big one for me and something that I'm definitely struggling with more so as I am getting larger, as baby is growing. It is so difficult to eat. It's almost to the point of painful where you have to stand up or sit up straight and get up from your food and you can't lay down right after you eat i will tell you that i have also also you guys told me you're not going to be able to eat spicy foods because you guys know i love spicy foods and i was eating them throughout the first trimester and a lot of you had said you're not going to be able to do that and i have definitely hit that point where i don't get heartburn like in the chest area but I'm getting it in my throat and it's not just with spicy foods, but it did start with spicy. So no hot sauce at all anymore, no sriracha, but now it's almost starting with like tomato based products, pickles, anything that is high in acidity is causing my throat to just burn and I'll just burp up burning <laughs> dragon fire throughout the entire day. And I still do eat tomato based products occasionally, but I regret it later and pickles. I do the same thing. It's just weird. It just burns my throat. So that is definitely one of the main symptoms into my second trimester that I am noticing. Oh, in the beginning. Yes. I had a very fast and loud heartbeat and I am noticing I still have that where it felt like I could hear, I could feel my heartbeat. The first time I noticed it, we were walking around universal. When did we go, babe? Was it the end of April? But I noticed I was just casually walking and I could feel my heartbeat and hear it in my head. And I would just try to take deep breaths, drink lots of water, always having snacks to make sure that I wasn't having sugar drops or anything like that. But I felt like that was really a strange sensation. Even just if I'm sitting at home and relaxing on the couch, I could feel and hear my heartbeat in weird places. And I think that's just because all the extra blood flow, your body's working harder to pump to you, to pump to baby, and it's just a lot going on in there. In the beginning of my second trimester, I was also getting a lot of headaches. And I'm very prone to migraines in general, but I was getting a lot of pounding, 
headaches and then they slowly started to go away a few weeks into the second trimester thank goodness and also my migraines have been so much better um, but going into the second trimester i think i've had one or two migraines total which not bad so we're gonna go there but constipation has been one of those things for me i really struggled my doctor recommended colace always talk with your doctors before taking anything, of course, that's what they recommended for me and it did not work at all. And then my mom recommended this product called Psyllium Husk, which you can get at Whole Foods stores. It's a natural fiber basically. And you put two teaspoons in water and you drink it. And that has really, really helped me in this second trimester. But I had constipation in the first and the second. So it's still something that I'm struggling with, but it is getting better. Another symptom that I got in the second trimester was swollen fingers. <laughs> so I am not wearing my wedding ring or my normal rings anymore. And that also stopped mid April. So about two months into the second trimester, I was like, yeah, that is not gonna work. It was a day that we spent at Universal all day and I could barely get them off. I tried to put them on the next day and they just wouldn't go on. And actually recently I tried to put them on again and it's just, it's just not happening definitely having the finger swelling. And I also started very recently, literally the week before my second trimester was about to end, I ended up with foot swelling and it was mainly my left foot and it was really bad. And I was like, what in the world that came out of nowhere? And I called my doctor, she ran through a bunch of questions with me to make sure that it wasn't a blood clot or anything like that. And it just turns out it was you know, the typical pregnancy swelling. Plus it's very hot and humid in Florida where I live. Well, it's not so humid right now, but it will be. But just the heat, you know, and I was on my feet a lot. We had friends in town. So if I'm on my feet a lot and I'm outside in the heat, my feet swell. And the best thing to do for that, she said, was get in the pool and swim. If you have a pool, keep your feet elevated. And also icing is very helpful. So that is what I've been doing. And the funny thing is, is I haven't had the swelling since our friends left and I haven't been like outside walking a ton and I haven't been in the heat a ton. So I think that is rather helpful. I have also noticed my stomach has obviously gotten so much bigger as he's getting bigger and my skin is feeling tight and sometimes itchy and the itchiness is happening more at nighttime when I lay down, which I've had to increase my oil and my lotions on my stomach. I will link down below what I use. It's the bio oil. And then at night, sometimes I'll use the sheer Aveeno um, unscented lotion, but I just slather myself in that. So I am getting really tight and itchy. And towards the end of the second trimester, he's getting larger to the point where last night I was so uncomfortably full. I was laying in, a, laying in bed and I felt like my stomach was going to rip. Like that's just how it felt. I don't know how else to describe it, but that's how it felt. And then sometimes I get this sizzly, the weirdest thing, pop rocks. I'm not sure. A sizzly feeling like under my rib cage. I don't know. Very weird. I'm not really sure if that's normal, but it doesn't really hurt. It's just a weird sensation. I would say. Speaking of stretch mark preventatives and all of that, I do not have any stretch marks on my stomach, but I do have stretch marks on my boobs. And it's just under, like the underneath, the lower, those kind of started in the second trimester. But a great thing is they're not sore. In the first trimester, the boobs were so sore. Like it actually hurt to walk, <laughs> which is crazy. And then in the second trimester, you definitely well, I didn't personally have any soreness, which was great. So that's like kind of a recap of my symptoms. I think all of them, probably not. I'm probably missing them. I'll go back and edit this video and be like, dang it, you forgot this, 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 and this. But that's definitely a lot of the main ones. So the next question is, when is your due date? And my due date is August 19th. How many new clothing pieces have you needed to purchase? So this is a great question. I originally was just upsizing and I wasn't buying anything maternity. And then when I did try to buy maternity clothes, they were either see-through or they didn't fit right or they were like baggy in the crotch, not tight enough on my belly. And I found the Holy Grail legging. So I have definitely purchased quite a few leggings and I have recently purchased some shirts on Amazon. So I will link those down below for you guys in case you want to pick them out. My zip up hoodies are now getting tight on my belly. 
Um, so definitely, we're definitely having changes. I've definitely had to purchase a few things. And I wrote down here in my symptoms, jeans. I have not worn jeans in so long and I actually saw a really cute pair and I was like, ooh, I should buy them. And I'm like, why am I trying to buy jeans? I can't fit in them. So I left them there, thank goodness. But I almost had that remnants of, oh, jeans. I love jeans, even though I don't. I love leggings, they're the most comfortable. But just that feeling of being able to put them on kind of thing, I guess. But I stopped wearing my jeans at week 15. I remember I was on a road trip to visit my best friend, Angela, who is also pregnant. We are two days apart in due dates. And I remember having to unbutton my jeans on the ride home. I was so miserable and I have not worn jeans since. I probably could not even imagine trying to put them on right now. But the leggings that I purchased are from Aerie. There is two different kinds that I like. There's a kind that are called, ooh, what are they called? They're the airy, ooh, every day, I don't know. I'll link them, but there's a pair that is, they're both the foldovers. That's what makes it cover the whole belly, which is amazing and it gives you support, but they're more of a light and buttery feeling. So they're not gonna, suck you in and they're gonna show kind of if you have dimples like I do on the back of your thighs, most likely in the sun they're gonna show that. And then there's the other form which are the airy hugger fold over high-waisted leggings which are much tighter in the sense that they kind of like hold everything in for you. So I am, I just ordered medium in those and they fit me but they're tight. So I'm gonna send them back and order a large, but anyways, I will link everything down below for you guys. And then the Amazon shirts are just the classic fitted t-shirt, ruched on the side, perfect for the growing belly. Wow, the light just changed. It got very cloudy, a cloud just passed over the sun. But yes, I have had to make some purchases, but I don't wanna do like too much. Is pregnancy scary? You've wanted this for so long and now you're almost to the end. Love you, love you too. So I would definitely say the first trimester is the scariest and the second trimester is such a relief. The second trimester does have its struggles though and its anxieties, I will say. So of course in the first trimester, you're just taking it day by day, hoping everything goes smooth and that you make it to the second trimester. And that I would say is the scariest and the hardest thing to deal with. It's just the constant everyday thought. And I had spotting in my first trimester, which was also a very scary thing, but it was completely normal and okay, but it was terrifying to me. But then the second trimester, it's smooth sailing in the beginning. You're like, yes, second trimester, woohoo. Also, a lot of you guys were asking me if I had any nausea. I had nausea in the first trimester, but I never had morning sickness to the point where I was throwing up. I was so lucky with that. Um, but with the second trimester, I would say the anxiety sets in that baby is coming. Like now that I'm in my third trimester, how I feel now is he is coming so soon. I don't have everything ready. I feel like I'm not prepared, even though you don't, you don't have to have the room all set up and you don't have to have all of this and all of that. Like what your baby needs is love, care, food, shelter. You know, like that's what your baby needs. It doesn't need a whole furniture set and all of that. But I just felt like to feel organized and prepared and ready, I felt like I needed to have the nursery set up and ready to go. So <laughs> we're working on that. Um, currently it is still a work in progress and I'm going through all the bags of clothes and putting all of those away. And then a lot of people have asked me if I plan to take Lamaze classes and if I plan to do this and do I plan to do that. And that can be kind of overwhelming because then you're like, well, I have not even read a book. <laughs> I have not even read a book yet on breastfeeding, on labor and delivery, on this, on that. And then you start to feel like, wait a minute, I don't know what I'm doing. But here's the thing, guys. Yes, it's great to read and give yourself that knowledge to prepare. But at the same time, I don't ever really think you can be fully prepared until you're in it and you're experiencing it. And kind of like school in a way, like all the knowledge in the world can't really prepare you for the hands-on portion of the job. And I think it helps, don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong guys, but I just think that actual hands-on experience is where it's at and where you're gonna learn the most. Um, but I do want to research a couple of things a little bit more before he arrives. But 
don't feel all that pressure and all that overwhelmingness of having to know everything and having to have read 50 books and read and listened to all these podcasts and have it all together. So I just don't think that that's realistic, but that is the kind of pressure that you start to feel when you're coming into the end of the second trimester. And I would imagine it definitely intensifies as you work through your third and you're approaching the due date. I just look back and think how fast that first trimester went and that it feels like so long ago and we're already into the third trimester and his due date is 12 weeks away. Like it is gonna go so fast. Another symptom which keeps happening when I'm talking to you guys is it's not really a burp, but it's a weird <laughs> feeling. I don't know, it's kind of like a silent burp, I guess, where your throat, I don't know how to explain it. But you probably saw me do it several times, so I figured I would point that out. How are you sleeping? So in the beginning of the second trimester, it was rough and I have no idea why. It was every day I was up. I wouldn't say every day, but several times a week, I kept waking up from like, three in the morning until about 4.30 in the morning and I was up solid. There was no going back to sleep. I was straight awake and that has settled down and now I am sleeping very well for the exception that I probably wake up between five and eight times to go pee in the middle of the night. I am a huge water drinker so that probably has to do with it. A lot of the apps tell you to kind of like cut off the water drinking at like 6 p.m but I just can't do that. I start drinking water until eight, until nine, and then I suffer the consequences. Um, <laughs> plus, I've noticed if my bladder is full, I feel like it gets in his way and he starts kicking it and punching it and it makes me have to pee. I feel like I have to pee really bad and then I'll go and it's like a little trickle. So that's kind of a funny thing. But yeah, I would say sleep is okay, just waking up a lot. Oh my gosh. The Charlie horses, they're only happening at night when I'm sleeping, except once it happened in the pool. But I had another one last night where I got a wicked Charlie horse and they're all in my calf. And I don't, I don't know. The doctor told me I could take magnesium supplement, which I have started to do. And I still got a nice intense Charlie horse in my calves, which is also a very common symptom in pregnancy. Is your pregnancy going how you thought it would? Actually, it's going much better than I thought it would. I totally thought, as I'm very prone to motion sickness, car sickness, nausea in general, I really thought I was gonna struggle so bad in the first trimester. And I, very thankful to have had a very smooth pregnancy so far. I do have sciatica, which I've been very open about. I had sciatica previously, like before pregnancy. I have herniated discs in my neck and my lower spine, which doesn't obviously help the sciatica. And I also had a doctor tell me, please don't get pregnant until you have the surgery. And I just didn't wanna have a surgery in my late 20s and probably should have listened, but I don't know. My sciatica, I had a really bad spout in my second trimester and it has been much better. A lot of you guys have been asking the question of, was it worse before or worse during pregnancy? And I would just, the one flare up spout that I had in the second trimester was probably the worst sciatica experience that I have ever had to the point I was calling my pain management doctor who gives me injections for my sciatica, which you cannot do during pregnancy but I was seeing him pre-pregnancy and he basically said, there is nothing that I can do for you, you're pregnant. So the advice is to do the stretches, of course. So I have many stretches that I do and it's a fine line between walking too much and not walking enough, doing too much exercise, not doing enough exercise. That is a classic with sciatica, which can be really frustrating. And a lot of people ask me, what does sciatica feel like? So it's a pain for me, it was on my left side and then during pregnancy it actually trans transferred to my right side when it was really bad. And it's a pain that you get in your lower back into your butt and it can be severe and it can send shooting pain down your leg and into your foot and sometimes it can be really, really bad. The one that I had that was really bad during this pregnancy was so intense that I had to have Larry help me put my socks on, put my shoes on, 
Um, getting off the toilet, I would scream. Sitting on the floor, getting off the floor, I would yell. It was just a really, really tough period, but it has subsided, but I still have the occasional sciatica pain. It's just not as bad as it was. That was really, really intense. So I'm glad that that kind of faded away. I don't know if he was in a growth area where he was pushing on the nerve or Larry and I were also painting his room. I don't know if it was going up and down the ladder, which is one of the worst things I think you can do for the sciatica, apparently as ladders. <laughs> Whew, burping. But it is much, much better, thank goodness. We'll see how we do through the third trimester with getting much bigger. I am feeling a lot of pressure on my pelvis now where I feel like I need something to kind of like hold my belly up. Um, but I haven't purchased anything for that yet. So if you have any recommendations down below, let me know. What did you enjoy most about the second trimester? I think what I enjoyed most about the second trimester is being able to feel him move. A lot of you asked when I first felt him move. I did mark that in my notes. So let me go back to that page. Ha. Ah, at week 19, I marked light baby movements feels like little blips. And I remember it was when Jackie and Bob were visiting. I was sitting on the lanai. My best friend Angela felt them about two weeks before I did. So I was like on high alert for anything and everything. And it can be really confusing because it almost feels like a hungry tummy gurgle or like, like I said, like just these little flutter blips. It's really hard to tell. And I was on high alert and I was sitting there and at week 19, I felt it. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's what it was. And then it started to increase from there. And by week 21, I had noted that he is most active in the evenings. And I did notice if I had a Reese's cup or a Reese's cup, however you pronounce it, he goes wild. It's probably from the sugar in the dessert, the little Reese's cup, but he loves them. And every time I eat them, we know that he is gonna go wild. And now up to where I'm at currently at 28 weeks, he moves so much more. So especially first thing in the morning and then definitely in the evenings. And then during the day, he'll move a little bit, but mostly I would say early mornings and evenings. His favorite spot is always my lower left abdomen. But now <laughs> as he has gotten bigger, he's moving all the way up into my upper abdomen, just under my right rib and twice he has gotten just under or into my right rib that has made me jump. And it's not painful, I would say, but it's just an odd pressure feeling. And he is to the point now where you can see from the outside, my tummy like bounce and move. We're not to the stage yet where you're seeing a whole foot come out or anything like that, but you can definitely see him moving around and making my belly kind of move. Oh, and hiccups. That was a thing. So last week, the very, very end of the second trimester, they had said to kind of look out for hiccups. It feels like this very steady, light feeling. And now I know exactly when he has hiccups and he has hiccups a couple of times a day. And it's just a very consistent, just like a little thud. And it lasts for a few minutes and then it goes away. But it doesn't feel like the kicks. It's a totally different feeling. But I didn't know that's what it was until I read it and I was like, oh yeah that totally makes sense so that's been fun so i would say the most amazing thing is just seeing the belly grow and then feeling him move it's just the best part of the second trimester oh and having energy back hardest part of the second trimester and any cravings so the hardest part of the second trimester i would have to say is just how everything that i used to be able to do very quickly I can no longer do. I used to have a task list of like 20 things on it, a task list of like 20 things on it, and I would just nail them out and get them all done and go 100 miles per hour. And now I feel like I get two or maybe five of those things done on the list and I'm looking at the list, which I currently have one of those lists, and I'm looking at it thinking, it is taking me two days to do this. And then for another example, the baby's clothes and bags. I've had like 10 bags in our closet and about another 15 bags in our bedroom of all of his stuff that just we bought and we've been keeping it in there because we weren't ready to put it in his room yet because the we had the floors put in and we needed to paint the walls and all of that. 
And I feel like before pregnancy, I would be able to whip through all of those bags and get everything put away in a day, no problem. It's taken me days. I still have bags to go through. And that's something that I've had to learn to just be like, okay with. I'm not going to get it all done in one day. I'm tiring out or my feet will start swelling or my back will start aching. Like if I'm on my feet and then I can just feel him sitting really low. And then I get those kind of lower cramps, like very, very mild cramps. And that's when I know you're doing too much. You need to sit down and relax. So I would say the hardest part is just not being able to get everything done that I feel like I need to get done. Whew. What are these burps? <laughs> Can't even get a sentence out without all these burps. Ah, another hard part I would say is just the belly growing, which is a beautiful thing, but it makes putting on shoes and like bending over to pick up things much more difficult to the point where I feel like I'm <laughs> when I'm tying my shoes and leaning over. I feel like I'm losing blood circulation to my head and I'm like, okay, I need to just breathe. Which by the way, speaking of blood circulation to the head, I had my first spout of a dizzy spell in my very last week of the second trimester. It was when myself, Larry, Hillary, and Luke, our friends, when they were in town, we went kayaking and I turned and looked at something that Larry pointed out and then I turned back and all of a sudden everything around me was swooshing moving my ears were ringing I was like oh my gosh I'm about to faint in a kayak in the water I was wearing a life jacket at least I actually did not faint but it was weird it was like everything started spinning and it was coming and I don't know what happened I don't know if from the water moving it made me dizzy I'm not really sure but that was my first very intense dizzy spill. I've had a few, but very mildly where I could just sit down and calm down and breathe and drink some water and I was fine. Oh, and cravings. I wouldn't say even in the first trimester, I would say the only cravings that I had, it was, well, I don't really remember, but I do know that I lived off of fruit smoothies and that was number one, because I was nauseous and I didn't really want to eat meat i remember was a no 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 fruit smoothies was like a big thing for me and then in the second trimester i could eat anything and everything until i couldn't with anything spicy but the one thing that is weird for me that i never buy that i don't usually gravitate towards is sour candies so the little sour patch kids not sour enough for me <laughs> they were too sweet i needed something extra like more sour and there's like these tape things i don't know what they're called but they're sweet and then they have all that sour sugar on them or the lifesavers that have the sour i went through a period of really 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 liking those but besides that everything has been pretty normal for me i've never really had super intense out of this world cravings what foods are you avoiding so I am avoiding, like I said, anything that is triggering my acid reflux or fire breathing dragon throat. So anything high in acidity or spicy, I am currently avoiding. Um, also raw fish, avoiding all of the raw things and just other classic things that they recommend that you kind of stay away from. So undercooked runny eggs or deli meat. I haven't got into that although they say you can heat it up to a certain temperature I think it's 165 degrees Fahrenheit and then you can let it cool and eat it I just haven't done that I've been sticking to like a veggie sub if I want a sub but the main things that I'm staying away from for my specific body is just those for now I think I hope I'm not forgetting anything but that's what I'm doing did you get your energy back? Is sleeping getting uncomfortable now? Definitely got the energy back. I felt great in the second trimester. That has changed already since entering the third trimester. And sleep getting uncomfortable now? Yes, it wasn't until the very end of the second trimester. And I mean very, very recently. And that means just constantly rolling over, using my body pillow, constantly having to have the pillow in between my legs because I just feel like my body has grown even in my thighs in my butt I just feel like they've gotten much bigger and my thighs are sticking together and it's driving me nuts when I try to sleep so I have to sleep with a pillow in between my legs I, I imagine it's going to get even more uncomfortable as I get larger through the third trimester so I will let you guys know how different it gets 
Have you experienced forgetfulness and or pregnancy brain? 100%. I did it today. I did it when our friends were here. I had a specific reason. I was going into the bedroom to look for something. I think I was looking for something. I went into the bedroom and I just sat there and I stared and I'm like, what am I doing in here? What am I doing? And I just leaned on the bed, <laughs> put my hands on the bed, leaned over and I'm like racking my brain and it was gone and it never came back to me. And it happened today again. I went into the kitchen to do something and I walked back out and I was like, I have no idea what I was doing. I've also noticed sometimes I'll be talking and all of a sudden I'm losing my train of thought and it is just leaving and I don't know where I was going with something and I'm like, what, <laughs> what is happening? Um, so I have noticed those little, little, little moments of definite forgetfulness, which have you noticed, babe? Or <laughs> so here we are. Okay, so that is all the questions, but I do want to run through my pregnancy notes of the second trimester just in case I missed anything, just to recap. I did mark at week 18 that baby can now hear my voice, which I remember was such an exciting feeling knowing that he could hear myself and then he was starting to be able to hear people around, which was really fun. A very big moment in the second trimester is going to be your 20 week anatomy scan. And I wrote baby is healthy. He was measuring in the 40, 41st percentile and he was measuring two days ahead of his due date. So, oh, my belly button. Oh, and the veins. Okay. So by week 24, I wrote my belly button is showing more, not completely an Audi, but it is definitely pushing out. And oh, I went through a period of where my surgery foot, a foot that I had surgery on years ago was hurting a lot. But I do think that had to do with the fact that we got hardwood floors and my body was adjusting to that. It literally felt broken, <laughs> it was intense. And then at 24 weeks, I wrote that baby is moving more and more each day, especially when I lay down for bed. And then I wrote that is when the stretch mark started on my lower boob. So that was by week 24. So I will say, <laughs> with body changes and accepting your body and how has my body changed? Cause I've had a few questions like that as well. And I've enjoyed every moment so far, even the stretch marks on my under boobs, I don't mind. It's just, I know my body is growing. And I will also say that my boobs do look different. I don't, I don't know, well, I know. I know what looks different. <laughs> it's my, what are those called? What are they called? The, the, why am I wanting to say, is it an aioli, aiola, areola? Is that what it's called? Around like your nipple. I don't know. I swear it has doubled in size and they're much darker, which I have researched is completely normal. And that is so that basically it's a target bullseye for your baby to see so that he or she can latch on and breastfeed. So that's been interesting. And then my stomach, uh, just looks very veiny. Like you can see all the veins in my stomach and my linea negra line. I actually got very, very, very early, maybe around eight weeks, nine weeks of pregnancy. And I still have it. I wouldn't say it's darkening, but you do notice it a lot more, especially with the belly button popping out. And I'm noticing the skin around my belly button is getting super waxy, shiny. And I think that's just because my belly is really growing and just getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And I feel like I constantly need to do like the, the deep breath thing. And I'm like, and we still have many of time to grow. We have until August 19th for this belly to grow. And as I am filming this video, which you guys will be seeing tomorrow, it is May 30th. So we still have lots of growing to do. And I'm already feeling, <laughs> doing all of that, which is really funny. Oh, I didn't bring this up. Okay, so along with the throat burning, I noticed that, and it's happened several times, when I eat, and this is probably because your uterus is now above your belly button, things are getting moved around, and you know, baby is filling that space. But if I eat, or I drink a lot of liquid or water, if I bend over to pick something up, I have literally like thrown up in my mouth, which, is not the best feeling, it's gross, and it has happened several times. And I just think that's because of all the pressure on the stomach maybe, and it's just pushing it up when I, the gravity is, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> that is pretty much, I think, everything for my second trimester recap. I can't believe we're already here and in the third trimester. And hopefully 
fingers crossed, I will film the third trimester maybe right before his due date so that I don't go past, but who knows, maybe he'll come early and the third trimester video won't go out until after he's born. That is crazy. Oh my gosh. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for your questions. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below how your second trimester went and what symptoms you had and experiences you had. And I will see you guys again very soon in the next video. Bye.